is Elena. I'm from Impact Hub Basin and I'm local coordination for the program Circle Economy Transition. And uh, I'm happy to welcome you and to moderate you through the, uh, through the event tonight. Just to mention that this is a very exciting uh, event for, for us uh, because it's a first event with so many partners like for the Circle Economy Transition Program. It's the first program where all five impact hubs are co-organizing it, as well that uh, as well as this event is also organized in cooperation with with uh, Zero Waste Innovation Lab by Impact Hub Basel, with Kafesh uh, Purlos, Gaia Hotel, Braxis Teen Who Dance, and Pure Taste. Uh, we are very excited. And uh, just to start with, I would like to pass on shortly to people who have been working on this event as well, but not going to speak tonight. And this is to our local coordinators of Circle Economy Transition of other Impact Hubs. Can you please, Nora, switch on for a moment and say hi to everybody? Hello. 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 Hello, it's me, uh, Dora. Sorry, somehow it's a little bit slow with the turning on the voice. Uh, I'm from Impact Hub Bern. So we work together with uh, Olena, Krista and Loren to organize these events, usually locally, but this is the first time when we have the privilege to organize a national circular economy transition event. Uh, yes. So welcome from my side as well, and looking forward to see how it goes. Thank you, Nora. Uh, Lauren, can you please switch on? Yes, sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to see you also. Uh, I won't repeat it a lot, but yeah, I'm also coordinating the Circular Economy Transition from Impact Hub Zurich, and I'm really looking forward to this event tonight together. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, Krista? Hey, so I'm Krista and I'm the local coordinator uh, of these events at Impact Hub Lausanne and uh, Geneva. And is this where I'm taking over? No, no, yeah. Not, not, not all yet. Uh, I would also like to uh, invite Anna Lara. He is our tech guru for tonight to say hi to us because we guys all owe her. Uh, all their tech issues that are working hopefully quite well tonight. Anna. Hello everyone, welcome. I will be here behind the curtains um, answering your questions as well and trying to make this go as smooth as possible. Uh, thank you very much, Anna. So uh, before um, I will continue, uh, I would like you all guys to ask to mute yourself if you're not muted, because it will help all the speakers to not to get interrupted. And maybe you also want to switch on your camera. It's not obligatory, but it would be nice to see your beautiful faces during presenting, so we don't present to the black screens. And with this on, I will share my uh, screen again to show a couple of slides to you and to tell you a little bit about the plan for tonight. So uh, this is the agenda for tonight. Uh, we're going to have a short introduction round from me, uh, from my colleague Krista, whom you have already met, and from Emily Langlo, uh, the manager of Zero Waste Innovation Lab here at Infant Hub Basel. We will then start with zero waste stories uh, from the Cafe Spurlos, from Hotel Gaia, from Rex Sustainable Events, and from the Pure Taste. Uh, after the keynote speeches, we will have a panel discussion um, moderated by uh, Moni from uh, Zero Innovation Lab. And uh, after their panel discussion, we will move into the different spaces to the breakout rooms to brainstorm on the solutions for uh, our zero waste uh, companies that uh, will be presented tonight um, for their zero waste challenges that they currently have. And after this, we'll have a close, uh, short closing, and that more or less, that's it. I just would like to mention to you that we have planned two breaks through the events. 
uh, after the first two keynote speeches and then uh, between the um, before the panel discussion. So you guys will have some moment to refresh, to get a drink, to use the restroom, or just, you know, whatever you want to do for a couple of minutes. So um, here are a couple of organizational questions which I would like to share with you as well. The first one is the language. Um, as you may have seen in the event description, we're going to switch between German and English all through the events. So um, yeah, enjoy it. Uh, those who may not feel that comfortable with one language will definitely enjoy the presentation in another language. Uh, and uh, now I would like to show you there to show you uh, the main function that might be useful um, for you to know in the Zoom for tonight so you feel comfortable about being part of this event tonight. Okay, just cannot show you the panel somehow. But anyway, this is a, a panel that you uh, have in a little bit limited version. So just for you to know here, you can switch on and switch off um, the, the sound. So mute and unmute yourself. Here you can switch on and switch off uh, the video. Um, here uh, you can uh, see all the participants and if you find yourself in the list, like me, for example, here, you can change your name. If you have a whatever funny nickname now automatically in the Zoom here. Here you can find the reactions and if you feel to, you can kind of show that, that you're clapping, that's something that you like or maybe you dislike during the event, just uh, in this way to communicate with the speakers and with each other. Uh, I would also recommend you to use the speaker view. Uh, I cannot show it to you at the moment because, uh, but it, uh, because I don't have the full screen uh, in front of me, but it's on the right upper corner. There is a speaker view or gallery view um, optional. So we can recommend you to switch for the speaker view so you always see the speaker and the slides in the bigger screen and the participants in the smaller screen on site. Here uh, we have, uh, we also have chat function. Somehow it's not show at the moment as well on my panel, but you definitely have it on your panel. And uh, so in the chat, uh, we suggest you to ask uh, any questions if you have any technical questions. So Anna, will, uh, Anna Laura will help you with this in this case. Uh, or uh, later you will have an opportunity to ask uh, questions to the speakers during their presentations. Uh, we kindly ask you to stay unmuted during the event because we are so many. So uh, we don't have uh, a little bit of a chaos here. So if you have any technical questions or questions to speakers, please use the chat function. Yes, so um, that's it. And we are ready to continue with an introduction. And for this, I give over a flow to Krista from Impact Hub Lausanne and Geneva uh, to present the Impact Hub and circle economy transition. Okay, thank you, Elena. Uh, I will switch to German now uh, for the first little switch. Uh, and jetzt werde ich gerade einmal meinen Screen sharen. Okay. So. Also, guten Abend, mein Name ist Christa von Impact of Lausanne und Genf. Es freut mich sehr, heute mit Ihnen hier zu sein für diesen Event Zero Waste in Gastronomie. Ähm, wie Sie eben gerade auch gehört haben, haben wir hier verschiedene Vertreter von den verschiedenen Schweizer Impact Hubs. Ähm, und deshalb möchte ich zuerst einmal darauf eingehen, was eigentlich Impact Hub ist. Ähm, Impact Hub ist ein demokratisches Netzwerk auf nationaler und internationaler Ebene, das als Katalysator für nachhaltige, positive Veränderungen in der Gesellschaft agiert. Und Veränderung, das, das braucht Menschen, das passiert durch Menschen, die bereit sind, etwas anzupacken, zusammen. 
Das ist dann auch eine unserer Hauptaufgaben als Impact Hub. Das heißt, Leute von verschiedenen Sektoren und Hintergründen zusammenzubringen. Das heißt zum Beispiel die Geschäftsführerin mit dem jungen Unternehmen für den Erfahrungsaustausch, die Stadtverwaltung äh, mit dem Wissenschaftler, um Innovation zu stimulieren. Und im Endeffekt heißt es, dass wir Behälter ähm, kreieren, die diesen Austausch ähm, ermöglichen. Äh, durch sinnvolle Inhalte, also meaningful content, wie zum Beispiel diesen Anlass hier, ein lebendiges Netzwerk, das kann zum Beispiel ein Unterstützungsprogramm sein für ähm, junge Unternehmer, für Startups oder auch Workshops für unsere Mitglieder über Themen wie Digitalisierung, Nachhaltigkeit oder Unternehmertum äh, und auch inspirierende Räumlichkeiten zum gemeinsamen Arbeiten für Events und auch fürs Networking. Das heißt, wir sind ein Netzwerk, Netzwerk in der Schweiz äh, von äh, über 2000 Mitgliedern und international von 16.000 Mitgliedern, ein demokratisches Netzwerk, äh, das sich dem positiven Wandel äh, verpflichtet hat. Positiver Wandel, das heißt auch eine Welt gestalten, wo das Wohlergehen von Mensch und Planet eine Priorität ist und im Zentrum einer Wirtschaft steht, wo äh, die einen echten Mehrwert wirklich für alle schafft. Und so kommen wir auch zum heutigen Thema des, des heutigen Abends, äh, das im Zeichen äh, der Kreislaufwirtschaft steht, mit dem Fokus auf Zero Waste in der Gastronomie. Impact Hub als Vorreiter für positive Veränderungen in der Gesellschaft und Wirtschaft ist einer der Mitinitiatoren, also Mitgründer von der Circle Economy Transition Initiative, die diesem heutigen Event den Namen vorgibt. Und diese Circle Economy Transition Initiative, die wird auch mitgetragen von mehreren Leuten, Sie sehen es hier in den, in den Logos ähm, von unserem Partner Sanu Durabilitas. Sanu Durabilitas, das ist eine wissenschaftliche Denkwerkstatt äh, und die Initiative wird auch ähm, unterstützt von der Stiftung MAVA und von Engagement Libre. Unser Fokus liegt wirklich darauf, ein schweizerisches Ökosystem von Kreislaufwirtschaftsakteuren aufzubauen zu mobilisieren und zu vernetzen. Und das alles mit dem Ziel, den Übergang der Schweiz zu einer nachhaltigen, inklusiven Wirtschaft, also Kreislaufwirtschaft, zu ermöglichen. Wir tun dies, indem wir ähm, mittelständische Unternehmen beraten, wie sie ihre Aktivität, Aktivitäten Richtung Kreislaufwirtschaft umdenken können und junge Unternehmen unterstützen äh, und dabei helfen, Produkte und Dienstleistungen mit dem Kreislaufwirtschaftsgedanken zu entwickeln. Und äh, dazu unterstützt auch äh, unser Partner Sanu Durabilitas äh, die Forschungsarbeit und durch Forschungsarbeit und durch Empfehlungen äh, im Bereich Kreislaufwirtschaft die politische Umsetzung unserer Mission. Und last but not least bringen wir auch äh, Menschen, äh, Organisationen, kreative, innovative an Veranstaltungen zusammen. Und diese Veranstaltungen haben wirklich das Ziel, verschiedenste Akteure zu inspirieren und auch einen stimulierenden Austausch zu ermöglichen, so wie das heute Abend der Fall ist mit dem Event Zero Waste in Gastronomy. Äh, und so gebe ich das Wort zurück an Olena, die sie nun näher in das Thema Kreislaufwirtschaft äh, einführen wird. Dankeschön. Thank you very much, Krista. Yes, uh, I'm taking back and I'm taking back uh, in English. And um, as we're going to talk today pretty much about zero waste and circular economy, those are close topics I will explain now. Uh, I would like to give you a very brief and high level introduction into circular economy uh, and zero waste as a concept to give a little bit of a framework for the stories later tonight. To make it a little a bit less talking and more interactive, I will start with a short video uh, filmed by uh, Alan Marker Tour Foundation, which is one of the leader expert uh, organizations on, in the field of circular economy worldwide. So let us start. Living systems have been around for a few billion years and will be around for many more. In the living world, there's no landfill. Instead, materials flow. One species' waste is another's food, energy is provided by the sun, things grow, then die, and nutrients return to the soil safely. And it works. Yet as humans, we've adopted a linear approach. We take 
We make and we dispose. A new phone comes out, so we ditch the old one. Our washing machine packs up, so we buy another. Each time we do this, we're eating into a finite supply of resources and often producing toxic waste. It simply can't work long term. So what can? If we accept that the living world's cyclical model works, can we change our way of thinking so that we too operate a circular economy? Let's start with the biological cycle. How can our waste build capital rather than reduce it? By rethinking and redesigning products and components and the packaging they come in, we can create safe and compostable materials that help grow more stuff. As they say in the movies, no resources have been lost in the making of this material. So what about the washing machines, mobile phones, fridges? We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about another sort of rethink. A way to cycle valuable metals, polymers and alloys, so they maintain their quality and continue to be useful beyond the shelf life of individual products. What if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow? It makes commercial sense. Instead of the throw away and replace culture we've become used to, we'd adopt a return and renew one where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturers. Now, let's put these two cycles together. Imagine if we could design products to come back to their makers, their technical materials being reused and their biological parts increasing agricultural value. And imagine that these products are made and transported using renewable energy. Here we have a model that builds prosperity long term. And the good news is, there are already companies out there who are beginning to adopt this way of working. But the circular economy isn't about one manufacturer changing one product. It's about all the interconnecting companies that form our infrastructure and economy coming together. It's about energy. It's about rethinking the operating system itself. We have a fantastic opportunity to open new perspectives and new horizons. Instead of remaining trapped in the frustrations of the present, with creativity and innovation, we really can rethink and redesign our future. So, um, I would like to continue then with with the introduction, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, just to sum up, so the main goal of circular economy is to reduce the use of natural resources and to design all the waste from the economy to ensure sustainable development. And to follow up the video, let us look closer at different loops that there exist in this concept. So you uh, as a company uh, can already reduce on um, use of natural resources at the phase of production of your goods by thinking if you can refuse of using certain materials. Oh, um, sorry, I just heard that you cannot see the slides. Can you see now the slides? Can anybody give me a sign? No slides. No slides. Okay, let me try again. How about now? Yes, it we works. see the slides. Cool, thank you so much. So uh, let me start a little bit over again. So you see all those different loops uh, on the screen. And just to come back, like as a company, for example, you can already uh, 
reduce of using certain uh, materials uh, in your products or reduce on them. So if you can see this loop over here, right? At the stage of use of the products, uh, you as a company can offer, for example, services of uh, repairing goods to make sure they be used uh, for a longer time or as long as possible. When the product is not being used anymore um, by a certain uh, customer or client, this product can be um, can be uh, reselled to be reused over and over again. Now with the time as the product is being uh, worn out or not up to date anymore, you may choose to upgrade the product uh, to, for example, change the old outdated or worn out part to continue the use of the product, or you can use the still working parts of this product to uh, remanufacture and produce a new product. It's um, important to understand here that the shorter the loop is, the closer it is to the start of the use, the, the more value of the product you keep and the less energy and resources you have to invest to keep the product in use. But also, um, it is way easier and efficient uh, to uh, make sure those, all those loops are working if the company, the producer of the product, keeps the ownership of the product. Now, this, uh, uh, the topic of tonight's event is the zero waste in gastronomy. Now, you may wonder why even we talk now, we're talking now about the circular economy. In a nutshell, both concept, concepts and are very similar. So let us see in a little bit uh, closer to the, to the zero waste concept. So uh, by their Zero Waste International Alliance, uh, the definition of zero waste is that conservation of all resources by means of responsible production, consumption, reuse, uh, recovery of products, packaging, and materials without burning and with no discharges to land, water, or air that threaten the environment and human health. So it's pretty much similar to the definition of circular economy. More or less, those, uh, this, is, uh, this is, uh, the pyramid of activities of the zero waste. And if you compare it with our initial um, picture of the loops of the circular economy, so the key activities are pretty much the same. So in other words, with a bit of different structuring, the circular economy and zero waste are more or less the same thing. To my best knowledge, zero waste was started as a movement um, by a private person for other private persons for consumers uh, to create, uh, to, uh, to engage them and to inspire them to conduct more sustainable zero waste lifestyle. So it's would to answer the question like, what can you do as a person in your daily life to create a little, uh, to create as little as possible or no waste? In contrary, a uh, circular economy as a concept was focusing uh, from the start on, on business and, and the economical system as a whole. And it can answer questions like how to ensure that you, the companies, produce product or service that uses as little as possible resources and creates less or no waste. And how we uh, can create a new economic system that will use less resources and produce no waste. So the key principles, uh, reduce, reduce, and recycles are same for both concepts. The practical activities will differ though for a company and for a person. So when you, for example, as a consumer want to want packaging waste in your grocery, you will make sure to buy either unpackaged products or products in the package that you give on reuse or recycling. But as a producer of this good, you have to make sure that you offer either unpackaged product or in the package that is reusable or recyclable, and that either you will take this package back to reuse or recycle, or that there is another player on the market that will do it for your packaging. So the matter of perspective, uh, the principles are the same. Now a little bit of a uh, high level uh, input on the zero waste or circular economy in the gastronomy 
What can it look like? We will, of course, later hear the practical examples from four different companies. But this is a very high level, so you have an idea listed here. So maybe uh, as a gastronomy, uh, as a company working in gastronomy, you may prefer eco-friendly produced food selling on offering to your clients. And in this case, you will reduce on, um, on resources uh, because of the uh, less fertilizers used, less water used, less water and um, uh, soil um, pollution, like in bio or fair trade production. You may prefer more vegetarian a menu to offer to your clients because, again, uh, as we all know, there is significant difference in resources used to produce one kilo of animal or plant food. Uh, you may want to waste uh, and reduce the food waste, and this is probably one of the corner points for the zero waste in gastronomy because food waste uh, creates a lot of big negative impact. You may want to cascade a composed organic rests um, instead of just uh, throwing it away or giving to incineration. You may uh, want to avoid reduce and recy or recycle uh, the food packaging um, for the food that you get delivered to you know, produce food in the restaurant, for example or to give away. You want to uh, avoid single-use items um, like uh, napkins, cutlery and dish, um, packaging to go again. You might want to avoid reduce uh, and reuse uh, resources in use and supporting infrastructure. It's like interior design, uh, furniture, or toilets, how you organize all these things in your company. And you may want to reduce delivery uh, distances uh, for the goods uh, you use for your operation or for food you cook and go for most energy efficient uh, eco-friendly transporting means. So with this um, to say, with this uh, short introduction, I would like to give a flow to my colleague Emily Langlo, the manager of Zero Waste Innovation Lab at Impact Hub Basel, so she can keep on talking on, on work on zero waste. Thank you, Elena, that's great. Um, Tamara will actually help me with the presentation just because my laptop won't let me share anything, but I will tell you a little bit about the Zero Waste Innovation Lab. I will do that in German, but if there's any problems with that, let me know and I can switch to English as well. That's not a problem. Okay, ich bin die Projektmanagerin vom, vom Zero Waste Innovation Lab. Mein Name ist Emily Langlo und ich arbeite auch für den Impact Hub Basel. Um, ja, das Zero Waste Innovation Lab orientiert sich eigentlich an drei Sustainable Development Goals. Die sehen wir jetzt gleich. Und zwar geht es darum, die drei Goals ähm, sind die Nummer 11, die Nummer 12 und die Nummer 13. Und zwar ist das Städte und Siedlungen inklusiv, sicher, widerstandsfähig und nachhaltig gestalten, nachhaltige Konsum- und Produktionsmuster sicherstellen und umgehend Maßnahmen zur Bekämpfung des Klimawandels und seine Auswirkungen zu ergreifen. Diese drei um, Sustainable Development Goals von der UN versuchen wir eigentlich mit dem Zero Waste Innovation Lab zu erreichen oder dazu beizutragen, dass es, dass es in Basel auch Schritte gibt, um das zu verbessern. Wir versuchen dabei, um, überzeugende Lösungen eigentlich zu finden, um Abfall zu redu reduzieren, in, sowohl in der Produktion als auch in der Lagerung und auch äh, Nahrungsmittelabfälle in der Konsumation eigentlich zu verringern. Es geht darum, aber eigentlich konkret innovative Lösungen zu finden und diese dann auch zu testen. Wir gehen mit dem Zero Waste Innovation Lab ähm, nach drei verschiedenen Theorien eigentlich. Tamara, können wir die nächste Slide sehen? Genau. Und zwar ist das das 5A-Konzept. Refuse, Reduce, Reuse, Recycle und Rot. Und äh, Genau, dabei geht es eigentlich Refuse, also verweigern, was wir nicht brauchen. Reduce, reduzieren, was wir nicht brauchen und was nicht verweigert werden kann. Reuse ist eigentlich wiederverwenden, was wir konsumieren und was wir, 
weder verweigern noch reduzieren können und dann recyceln und eben den Rest kompostieren, also rot. Ähm, das andere ist die Theory of Change, bei der das ist unser Wirkungsmodell und der Projektplan eigentlich für das Zero Waste Innovation Lab. Und wir gehen natürlich auch nach der Circular Economy. Das hat ja Olena schon etwas mehr erklärt. Es geht aber darum, dass diese Konzepte eigentlich in jedem Schritt der Wertschöpfungskette ähm, in der Zero Waste Gastronomie Anwendung finden sollen. Also sowohl in der Produktion, in der Zuführung, in der Lagerung, in der Verarbeitung, Bedienung, Konsum und im Ausschuss. Und dann im Zero Waste Lab eigentlich, also bei uns im Impact Hub, wir dem Innovationsprozess eigentlich eine Basis bieten können. Das Ganze soll über drei Jahre hinweg laufen. Genau, und da gibt es die vier verschiedenen Teile, sowohl Forschung und Dokumentation, Bildung und Sensibilisierung, Innovations- und Erlebnisraum und dann die Skalierung eigentlich zum Schluss. Ich erkläre das jetzt in der nächsten Slide gerade noch mal ein bisschen genauer, was das eigentlich konkret heißt für uns. Genau, Forschung und Dokumentation. Es geht eigentlich darum, dass wir mit der InnoSwiss und der Fachhochschule in Nordwestschweiz zusammen einen Open Source Guidebook ähm, kreieren wollen, um der Gastronomie auch weiter, weiter zu helfen und das eigentlich regelmäßig abzudaten. Dafür ist Moni zuständig. Sie wird euch vielleicht später noch mal was dazu erzählen. Aber das machen wir eigentlich mit der InnoSwiss und der FHNW zusammen. Der nächste Teil ist dann die Bildung und die Sensibilisierung. Da wollen wir verschiedene Events und Workshops und Schulungen durchführen, 14 insgesamt im Jahr, die öffentlich und themenübergreifend sind, aber auch teilweise sehr interdisziplinär oder eben bestimmte Zielgruppen auch ansprechen, je nachdem, wo wir eigentlich versuchen, dieses Wissen dann weiterzugeben, was wir davor in Messungen und in Research gesammelt haben. Der nächste Teil ist dann der Innovations- und Erlebnisraum. Und zwar geht es dabei darum, fünf Unternehmen während drei Jahren zum Erfolg zu verhelfen. Also sei das durch Bewerbungsprozess, ähm, zur Verfügungstellung von einem Arbeitsplatz bei uns im Impact Hub, ähm, Organisation von professioneller Unterstützung, Peer-to-Peer -peer Learning Sessions, Mentoring. Genau, und dass wir da eigentlich verschiedenen Unternehmen, die sich mit dem Thema Zero Waste auseinandersetzen, sei das Startups oder Unternehmen eben, dass wir ihnen dabei unter die Arme greifen. Der letzte Teil ist dann die Skalierung. Das ist jetzt nicht aufgeführt. Das geht dann eigentlich darum, dass es eben nach den drei Jahren auch weitergehen soll, dass das in der Gastronomie oder durch Partner weitergetragen wird. Ja, es steht ein großes Team hinter, hinter dem Projekt. Wir machen das eben den Teil Bildung und Sensibilisierung und den Teil Innovations- und Erlebnisraum mit der Christoph Merian Stiftung zusammen und Forschung und Dokumentation mit der InnoSuis und der FHNW. Und es sind ganz viele verschiedene Leute eigentlich aus dem Impact Hub ähm, da mit involviert, weil das eben ein sehr übergreifendes Thema ist und sich das mit verschiedenen Sachen verbinden lässt, weil das Thema Zero Waste immer mal wieder eigentlich auftritt. Jetzt gebe ich weiter an Tamara. Thank you, Emily, for your presentation. Um, Tamara is here. So, Tamara Weber, Cup Manager of Café Spurlos, our first keynote speaker. Before I start, if I am allowed to say something to our guests. Um, I, so, I, starting with our keynote presentation with uh, four zero stories, you have an opportunity to ask your questions to speakers in the chat. Function. If you do this, please use their speaker name or the organization that speaker is representing, so we know who you address your question. We won't be able probably to answer all the questions, but we will collect them and we all will vote on the questions later on to choose uh, uh, several ones for our panel discussions for speakers. And with this, um, to Tamara, and Tamara is presenting in German. So I'm also going to share a presentation with you. Um, hopefully the right one. Um, okay. So we started at the end of the presentation, but let's start at the beginning. Um, so Café Spurlos basically um, 
German wie seit ja Deutsch ist viel, viel einfacher für mich, weil das meine Muttersprache ist. Genau, also ich begrüße euch zur Präsentation von Kaffee Spurlos. Äh, wie ihr gehört habt, ist äh, das Zevil ein Projekt vom Impact Hub und da ist auch das Kaffee Spurlos ein Teil davon. Es gehört nämlich zum Erlebnisraum. Es ist der praktische Teil vom ganzen Projekt. Aber nun beginnen wir doch wie so oft bei der Geschichte. Und zwar haben wir uns gedacht, im Oktober, wir ziehen hier im Dreispitz in ein großes Gebäude ein und im Erdgeschoss gibt es viel Platz. Was machen wir damit? Und es war uns sofort klar, dass wir einen Ort schaffen möchten, um Leute zusammenzubringen. Und so ist die Idee eines Cafés entstanden. Doch ganz ein normales Café, das tönt nicht ganz nach Impact ab. Es sollte eben auch einen Impact haben. Und darum ist man auf die Idee des Zero Waste Cafés gekommen. Man möchte mit versuchen, den Abfall zu vermeiden. Dieser Zero Waste Gedanke hat eigentlich schon im Umbau stattgefunden. Und zwar hat man versucht, verschiedene Materialien zu recyceln oder wiederzuwenden. Wie ihr auf den zwei Bildern rechts seht, ist die ganze Einrichtung aus einem alten Restaurant, die wir hier neu im Café wieder eingebaut haben, so wie zum Beispiel die Theke. Aber auch die Kaffeemaschine, die hier wie neu aussieht, ist eigentlich Secondhand. Sie wurde nicht mehr gebraucht, weil ein Café ähm, mehr, ähm, eine größere Maschine brauchte und wir konnten diese so wieder verwenden. Aber Zero Waste sollte man ja nicht nur im Aufbau des Cafés berücksichtigen, sondern eben auch im täglichen Kaffeebetrieb. Und darum ist es auch wichtig, auf die Auswahl der Lieferanten zu schauen. So bieten wir zum Beispiel Milch aus der Mehrwegflasche an oder Salat in Mehrweglesen. Aber ein Kaffee mit einem nachhaltigen Gedanken, das ist super und das möchten wir unterstützen, aber es braucht noch etwas mehr. Und darum der Erlebnisraum. Das Kaffee dient auch als Platz für Startups zum eben testen, wie kann man Zero Waste in der Gastronomie etablieren. Und das ist das, was Emily vorhin erwähnt hat. Wenn hier im Impact Hub Startups angesiedelt sind, die zum Beispiel ein Produkt haben, das ähm, hilft, den Abfall in der Gastronomie zu reduzieren, können sie dieses bei uns im Café testen und wir können dann mit ihnen gemeinsam erfahren, wie gastrotauglich diese Produkte und neue Erfindungen auch sind. Ein zweiter Teil ist auch, wie ihr gehört habt, geht es um die Forschung. Man forscht, wie Gastronomie nachhaltiger gemacht werden kann. Und da versuchen wir, ähm, versuchen wir Moni bei der Forschung zu unterstützen. Sie sagt zum Beispiel, ich würde das und das so machen aufgrund dieser Theorien und wir setzen dies dann um. Das wäre die Slide zum Experimentieren wie ein großes Buffet. Es gibt große Auswahl, man kann viele Sachen machen und man kann dann rauspicken, was einem am besten passt und was sich am besten in der Gastronomie etabliert. Ähm, da wir noch im Aufbau sind wir haben, ähm, und auch ausprobieren möchten, haben wir natürlich auch eine Wunschtafel bei uns im Café, damit wir auch sehen können, ähm, was sich die Gäste wünschen und entsprechend auf Bedürfnisse reagieren können. Aber im Gespräch mit Olena im Vorfeld für den Event hat sie mich gefragt, ja, was war denn der größte Erfolg, ähm, den ihr bis jetzt hattet im Café? Und wir haben zwar erst im Februar unsere Türen geöffnet und konnten eineinhalb Monate laufen und auf sein. Und was ich als größten Erfolg ähm, benennen würde, ist das, das Feedback der Leute, die Rückmeldung und das Interesse der Leute. Und nicht nur die Leute und die anderen Gastronomen sind interessiert, etwas Nachhaltiges in der Gastronomie zu etablieren, sondern eben auch die Medien haben dieses Thema immer wieder aufgegriffen und innerhalb von einem Monat diverse Artikel und, ähm, und auch Berichte geschrieben, warum eben die Nachhaltigkeit in der Gastronomie so wichtig ist. Und ich denke, das ist sehr spannend für uns zu sehen, dass es eben wirklich etwas ist, das die Leute interessiert. Und ich habe auch gesehen, es sind ganz viele Leute heute beim Event dabei. Und ich denke, auch das zeigt wieder, dass wir eben wirklich etwas machen, das auch einen einen Einfluss hat und dass die Leute auch ähm, interessiert. 
Aber so gut, wie es auch immer läuft, gibt es natürlich auch Herausforderungen, gerade beim Etablieren eines etwas neueren Konzepts in der Gastronomie. Abgesehen von dem, dass man zurzeit das Kaffee nur von außen besichtigen kann und kein Kaffee trinken kommen kann. Aber ich denke, da, ähm, das, das ist das Problem, was alle Gastronomen im Moment haben. Da gehe ich jetzt nicht weiter darauf ein. Es gibt auch andere Probleme im Bereich Zero Waste. Zum Beispiel, wie finden wir die passenden Lieferanten, damit wir auch transparent euch als Kunden sagen können, doch, das ist ein Produkt, das kommt von A nach B und es ist durchs Band nachhaltig produziert worden. Aber welche Challenges und Herausforderungen wir wirklich haben, können wir dann später in der Breakout-Session noch besprechen. Und ich freue mich jetzt schon auf eure Inputs und Ideen, wie wir diese Herausforderung angehen können. Und kurz noch zum Schluss, damit ihr auch wisst, wo ihr uns finden könnt. Ihr könnt uns über unsere Webseite finden oder auch über die sozialen Medien, sei es Instagram, Facebook oder einfach eine Mail schreiben. Wir halten euch regelmäßig auf dem Laufenden, wo wir gerade mit dem Kaffee stehen und wann es wieder aufgeht und was es dann für tolle Events gibt und wie wir euch ähm, mit diesem Ort inspirieren können. Und jetzt äh, würde ich weiter zurückgeben an Olena. Thank you very much, Tamara, for your presentations. So we are uh, switching back to English with our next presentation and I'm happy to introduce Celine de Gea, co-director of Hotel Gaia, and to give you a floor for your zero waste story. Thank you, Olena, and thank you, Tamara, for being part um, of this event. I'm very happy to be here with you and sharing our experience and our journey to becoming zero waste. So I'm gonna share my screen now. Are you seeing everything? Yes, we can see your slides, Linda. Okay, thank you, Elena. So, um, We're the Gaia Hotel. It's a sustainable family-run uh, hotel right in Basel, next to the train station. It is run by the same family for just under a century now. And um, our food is exclusively organic and focused on locally produced um, uh, eats. And we are committed to sustainability and um, we are targeting zero waste, which is quite a challenge. I will talk about that. So we are quite a big, big hotel. So we are a classical four-star hotel with, um, uh, it's, a, it's a historic building. So it has its challenges itself. We have 86 rooms. We have a, a spa area, which unfortunately is closed right now. And um, we have, um, due to the, the big number of rooms, uh, a lot of challenges that we had to rethink and, um, and uh, redesign, let's say. These are the measures that we've taken apart from reducing uh, packages. So the first thing that we started doing um, from 2015 onwards is reducing packaging and starting uh, buying in bulk and uh, reducing plastic mostly. It was already a very big challenge because we also changed uh, uh, simultaneously all of our suppliers basically because we were trying to source organic products um, and we wanted to be um, a fully organic uh, hotel at that time and it was very hard to find uh, the right suppliers. So besides those measures, um, we started to rethink what we could do next. Um, besides um, changing our processes and the way of working in the hotel. So um, we started collecting uh, uh, our soap for the Sapo Cycle um, organization. It's a foundation that basically melts the, the soaps and um, redoes them. So they, they, uh, they uh, reproduce those soaps and then um, send them to, to uh, welfare organizations. 
We also collect all of our coffee grounds, which is, um, which is more than a ton a year. Um, although we don't have a restaurant, um, we have a lot of uh, uh, coffee grounds from our, our breakfast uh, activity and bar activity and seminar activity as well. So uh, they are being used uh, by the agriculture, Urban Agriculture Association for, um, to create uh, um, quality mushrooms, which is quite exciting and it's really tasteful. I tried them. Uh, we are also delivering um, bread uh, to the elephants in the zoo, which should not be um, you know, published out loud because uh, the, the zoo doesn't want to have private uh, bread donations because the, uh, the elephants already have enough bread. Um, we have been doing this for the past two years and the amount of breads that they're getting right now is enough. And um, we also have uh, eco-friendly cleaning supplies in the entire uh, hotel, um, which uh, has been possible, let's say, ever since we started filtering our water. So we had to first uh, build the infrastructure uh, in order to, um, to be able to use the eco-friendly cleaning products, especially in the sanitation area. So that was a, um, a very big investment for us, but uh, it's, uh, it's worthwhile. So we don't use the same amount. So we could also reduce the volume of cleaning products that we're using through that. And we also were able to, uh, to use uh, ecologically friendly products. So these are the things that we've uh, done so far. The biggest challenge as well was um, getting rid of the packages. And um, we started measuring everything as well um, two years ago, which was also quite a challenge. Um, so we had to really, um, I mean, if, if there's a saying that if you don't measure, you can't manage. So you need to really measure what you want to manage. So um, we started measuring everything, basically uh, glass, aluminum, metals, um, not only pets, also other plastics, uh, paper, carton, soap, bread, uh, coffee grounds, uh, tetra, anything that you need. And we figured out that the biggest uh, waste that we're producing right now is actually glass. And uh, we reduced tremendously uh, the, the plastic uh, consumption. We have um, some of the cleaning products. They are still arriving in, in big, big uh, plastic uh, containers, but we are reusing them. So they are being sent back by the, the supplier uh, to the supplier, and he basically um, reuses those. We manage that. Also for the coffee, um, we managed to get the, the coffee uh, delivered in, in metal containers, which are being reused. So the coffee is being filled by the, the supplier in those uh, metal containers. And um, whenever we finish the coffee, those containers are being picked up by the supplier as well and refilled again. So um, those challenges were quite big because um, we needed to have basically the, the same wavelength and the same philosophy by the suppliers. Sometimes the suppliers themselves were, were dependent on their suppliers um, in order to do, that, to, to do that change possible. So it was, it was a, a big challenge and it took a lot of time to also um, you know, get in touch with everyone and get everybody in line. And we also had to sometimes pressure suppliers and, and basically give them a deadline. If they would not um, be able to deliver, we would actually change the supplier and uh, try to find somebody else. So um, not an easy task. <laughs> So this is uh, our uh, roadmap. We're also part of the United uh, Against Waste um, project, which has been uh, right now stopped because uh, of obvious reasons. The restaurants are closed and, um, and in our group, there were a lot of restaurants and hotels as well that do not uh, operate at 100%. So it didn't make any sense to uh, measure our food waste at this point in time. And um, yeah, um, we're gonna be part uh, still of the bio hotel. So they are doing their CO2 measuring as well for all the hotels. 
and we're going to be part of the IBEX first day, which is um, a, a certification that looks not only at, at um, the resources and um, the waste being reduced, but also uh, sustainability as a, a whole concept. So management, uh, social responsibility and all. So we're uh, quite uh, happy to be part of that project as well, which we hopefully will conclude by the end of this year. And yeah, this is our dog. When you when you come to our hotel, you can come and greet him. He uh, he is our our uh, manager of good mood. We call him. <laughs> so thank you for letting us uh, participate. And uh, I'm excited about uh, your questions later on. And I'm giving it back to Elena. Thank you very much, Linda. And your presentation brings us to our first break. And I suggest you'll use this as an opportunity either to stretch your legs or to go and use the bathroom to get a drink or a snack. Or for those who don't need those, we can play a little game with the help of Anna Laura. You're going to see now the questions list, uh, which you can answer. And then we will see what we all think about those questions later. So you now see the notification with questions, just go on reading and choosing the answers. And uh, thank you so much for those answering the questions. And I would like to invite Moni, who was preparing the questions, so she can let you know the right answers. Thank you, Olena. Um, so, yes, thank you very much for filling out the, um, the little poll we had. Um, so, very interesting results. I see here the first question most of you answered. Uh, well, this is the second part of the poll. Uh, unfortunately, there's been a technical hiccup. So, the poll disappeared and now everyone who um, put in the results knew that it uh, changed a little bit. So, um, the first part of the poll showed most of you said it's 713 kilos, a couple said 520, hardly anyone was for 350. The correct answer is that uh, a Swiss person uh, creates per year more than 700 kilogram of trash. This is normal household waste. The number of of waste in, in total is uh, way higher. If you're interested, there are very interesting t statistics that you can look up at the BAFU. Um, yes, exactly, that's the, what they do. So then, how much food is thrown away in a Swiss household? This, most people got correctly, it's 38%. Again, here, there's been a fantastic study, also funded by the, the BAFU, and um, it is, uh, very impressive to see these numbers. Then, since when is plastic used as packaging for food material? Here, most of you guessed that it was 1930. Actually, it was uh, invented, plastic itself was invented quite early, sometimes in the 1800s, but it was mostly used for different purposes. For food packaging, it became interesting only after World War II. Until then, it was mostly cans. So they changed from aluminum to plastic. And uh, yeah, it was very typical for that time when you come to think of it, big depression, and then you have all the shiny plastic with a lot of advertisement on it. So perfect for that time. 
And then the last question, yeah, you got that right. Coffee is a cherry and we hope that you all come and enjoy lots of coffee in the cafe when it's open again. So that's so far from me. And with that, I give back to Olena. Thank you very much, Moni, for this interesting facts and information. Thank you everybody for playing the game with us and welcome back. We are continuing now with our keynote speeches. Our next speaker is uh, Sanya Radik, event manager and founder of Rock Sustainable Events, and she will be presenting in English as well. So Sanya, welcome. Hi, Elena, thank you very much. Um, so let me just share quickly. So we are currently uh, part of the incubator program, just a short introduction of the Imparha Basel. Um, and we are a um, sustainable event company, event management company, and we are focused on organizing um, events in a sustainable way. So when we talk about the business event, so these are some of the usual associations that we that we have. So things that we notice: um, nice location, great looking food that you can post on Instagram, uh, floral decoration, some fancy, um, interactive, appealing branding, uh, people dressed up uh, coming in 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 speed cars to the event. So. Excitement is on a very high level. Well, also depending on the event content. But um, what is actually that we don't see? So another side of it, events that is never put up front. So have you ever wondered um, where does your food, event food comes from? So who is the supplier? Um, under which conditions are the animals treated? Um, or, or the workers? Uh, what is going on with the food waste, uh, with plastic, all the plastic bottles that you went. So all these problems of plastic pollution, uh, ocean pollution, uh, greenhouse uh, gases, CO2 emissions, biodiversity loss, human uh, labor exploitation, food waste, as I mentioned. So those topics are never put in focus at the event, and we are all part of it. And I just said, um, so the negative impact really lasts longer than our event memory or event excitement. So if we have a look at the current situation, so what are some of the problems that we are facing right now? And today we're gonna focus more on the food waste and how does that affect our society and the environment? So here you can see the pie chart from the Federal Office on the Environment showing the total amount of food waste in certain in Switzerland in certain sectors. So agriculture, 9% of food, food loss, 11% um, in catering, so where too much food is being prepared with lots of, lots of lef leftovers. Um, food industry, 37, as already mentioned, consumer with 39%. Um, there is a lack of awareness um, when it's concerning the perception um, of food and the food waste. So actually food loss happens um, in all the sectors um, or areas um, from farm to plate. And it's actually um, most pronounced in the beginning in the production and at the very end um, by the consumer. So actually 20 to 30% of the food waste um, is being wasted or, or lost before even reaching the consumer. So if we have a look um, at it globally, so 8% of the global greenhouse emissions um, are caused by gases uh, from rooting food and also energy use in food production that get wasted. So the biggest share of the greenhouse um, emissions in Switzerland arises from the transport and building sectors, but also followed by the industry, agriculture, and the waste. 
So it is very inefficient to use financial resources um, as well as water, land, um, energy, labor to produce food that ultimately is going to be waste or lost. So what is the score, uh, the, the core basis of, um, of our business model? So there was a time when the companies were, um, were mainly focused on the economic growth and implementing practices that were very um, degenerative and um, damaging the planet. So we also know this economy as linear. So, um, and the simple practices are simple take, make, and dispose. But all, the, all these things are changing now. So there are more and more companies who are not only shifting to circular economy, but as well uh, focusing on communities, customers, um, environment, and uh, employees. So also know and as a donut model, which you can see on your right. So considering these um, economic models and sustainable development goals, so we put value on integrating all the event management stakeholders in a circular system. So using the most of the resources, um, reducing waste, greenhouse um, gas emissions, and making positive impact on the environment. So we also um, select partners and suppliers um, prior to their sustainable practices and not upon the price. So when we talk about the scope of our services, so what are we doing? Um, we offer two types of services, event organizations um, for corporate events, such as workshops, training, seminars, conferences, um, apparels, dinners, or round tables. And the second service is consultancy, either individual or um, in, in, in a form of workshops. So our, we have, um, based our model on four main pillars. So agriculture production and food sourcing is very important for us that we supply our events uh, with food which is grown locally, uh, prepared from the caterers um, who are um, only using seasonal ingredients and preparing vegetarian and vegan food. So referring to the base management um, with waste materials and as well food waste, so we try to handle this during the whole process of uh, event planning, event organization. Um, and as well, we work with different um, uh, food waste platforms and organizations to handle this. Um, sustainable responsibility is a very important part. Um, so we measure and reduce ecological footprint of all our st stakeholders, inclusive um, transportation. So we really focus on sustainable responsibility and raising awareness of more sustainable behavior. So how to organize an event or business in a sustainable event. So when we, when we talk about event organization, so we select a cater which is, um, that is sourcing its food locally. So we choose a sustainable venue which um, has fewer CO2 emissions um, and desirably, uh, a green design and ar uh, architecture, um, transportation. So we are reducing CO2 emissions by selecting the, the sustainable transport providers. Um, and we are also motivating guests uh, to use some green uh, transportation solutions. Oops. So we are also implementing um, alternative and reusable um, solutions in order to equip our event services. So when we talk about decorations, promotional materials, uh, branding, goodie bags, menu cards, etc. So either we take the full and the complete organization of the event or we support companies or other event agencies to implement those circular and sustainable measurements into their planning. So the second part is consultancy and support. So we want to help our uh, partners and suppliers um, how to integrate certain um, sustainable practices into their um, business, into their work or into their service. And as an important part, analysis, analysis and report, um, we want to measure our impact. So that's actually not an easy task, but we have been working on developing rele rele relevant parameters that will help us to evaluate the, 
the event as well as one's business and to see how much waste have been prevented or saved, emissions, food, and, and so on. So, so what have we been up to so far? So we are currently working on um, expanding our partner network. So um, at the moment uh, we are recruiting partners uh, like um, suppliers, local suppliers, farmers, producers and gastronomers um, who are willing to work in a sustainable way or um, desirably who are already working um, in a zero waste way. So we have been uh, collecting already some uh, relevant data so we can get to know potential um, partners um, and how do they work, um, what are their practices um, in order for us to be able to evaluate um, their products or services so we can integrate them in our um, offer for the clients. So regarding the, the events, uh, what have been doing so far, so we have been planning um, certain um, events during this period. Of course, now in this situation, um, we are not allowed to um, deliver the events, but um, in cooperation with Impaha Basel and Seville, we are going to organize the next event, uh, Sustainable Speed Networking, on the 30th of um, October, uh, April on the 2020. I think Olena will mention that maybe afterwards. Um, and again, we are also planning some additional uh, events with circular economy transition and the tribe community. So what, is, uh, what are actually the challenges that, let me put this. So here you can see, um, again, so the partner pool network that I mentioned, recruiting and um, events that we are planning to organize in the next time. So what are actually the main challenges that we as a, um, as a company, as a startup are facing? So we noticed that there is not enough number of suppliers who are working in a sustainable and zero waste way. So some guests, some people, they do not care about sustainability um, and corporations, um, care more about profit than sustainability. And there is a lot of greenwashing going on, so people don't have trust in um, companies that uh, claim to be green, claim to be sustainable. Um, we also, um, upon our experience, um, it helped us to identify some, some of the challenges and problems uh, faced by our stakeholders. So, when we talk about suppliers, uh, we notice there is a lack of understanding and infrastructure um, for implementing or shifting to sustainable sustainability, so sustainability services. Um, workload and everyday activities, it, it takes too much effort to implement that. There is no adequate network um, of farmer suppliers um, and there is no trust into um, build up trust with, with the people who are working already in that way. And there is actually fear of shifting to our oh no, which is completely normal. So what we plan to do is to offer suppliers and to support them with our know-how, um, to offer sustainable innovations and efficient solutions that they can integrate into their everyday activities, um, to offer strong partner supplier network, um, transparency and reliability and uh, access to the new market and uh, possibility for revenue generation. Um, when we talk about the corporations, we notice there is a lack of knowledge to integrate um, sustainable, um, sustainable um, sustainability into event organization. Um, there is usual attitude, it, the, event, the sustainable event costs more than a normal event. Greenwashing, nobody likes that. There is no trust and there is actually fear of bad reputation. So if we imagine organizing an event and suddenly a supplier is bringing some plastic accidentally to the event and someone is taking a picture, putting on Instagram, so it can really compromise the image of the corporation maybe that can um, claim to be green and sustainable. 
So again, then um, what we can offer the corporation and companies when we organize an event is this know-how, um, sustainable analysis and reports. So uh, during the process of um, event planning and as well measuring the impacts um, um, after, after the event, what have been done um, and offering this transparency um, um, about the suppliers who are working in this way and reliability. But I will be very happy to continue this discussion with you then later on. So at the end, um, we, we don't want just another event with some short term experience or excitement or um, um, enthusiasm uh, that will just misuse our, um, our natural resources. So we want a joint col collaboration with, uh, with the stakeholders so we can make all together a positive impact on, on the environment and the society. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sonia, for sharing with us your presentation. And uh, this brings us to a very short break as we're a little bit out of time. So you guys, again, can grab a drink or a snack and use this couple of minutes. For those of you who choose to stay, uh, there is another game to play and a uh, sporty one. So I suggest us all to stand up from our chairs and to stretch a little bit your legs, your hands. come back to your computers and switch on your cameras so I know you're here with us. Cool, thank you very much. And at this point I would like to announce our last keynote speaker before the panel discussion, uh, Matteo Leone, co-founder of Pure Taste. Um, and Matteo will be presented in English. Matteo, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Cool. Hi. So, uh, my name is Matteo. I'm the founder of Pure Taste, the zero waste fermentation factory. Um, Pure, Pure Taste is fermenting uh, vegetable, fruit, and cereal and meat as well uh, since 2017. Um, what we are doing is actually reinterpreting the old fermentation tradition um, in a contemporary way. Is actually we are um, with that we, we are producing actually as well new products that are not uh, on the market before. Uh, like for example, um, I have here with me a couple of examples, like a, a coffee vinegar that is made. Uh, out of uh, uh, coffee grounds. We do the same with old bread, for example. So by using old bread, we are producing a, a bread vinegar. Um, what this fermentation actually is a bacterial preservation of the food, um, probably is the most old one in, uh, that we find in nature. It's not actually a, um, a human invention, is actually happening uh, everything by the nature. So the bacteria are working for us. Um, the project started in, um, officially in 2017 with uh, one year in the background to prepare um, so all the background, so as a website, company, networking, connection, and so on. The reason why we choose a zero waste uh, uh, approach to our business is because actually um, was the point where everything was beginning. So everything was uh, the focus was on the on the zero waste um, from the food until the end customers. So um, what well, we approach uh, different level of zero waste in our company actually from the food side we have contract with our producer. 
where we take everything. So um, you need to know farmers are producing vegetables and so on. Uh, not every vegetable is um, able to go into the market because maybe there are standards that they have to follow. So for this reason, there is a, um, a division in classes, let's say, about food. So we are, you have a first class, a second class, and the unsellable vegetable. Um, we take everything in the same pack. So we have a contract with our farmers where uh, for um, a partial price, let's say, um, we take all the vegetables all together. From the energy side, uh, our production actually doesn't need any kind of uh, eating. So we are not eating the food. It's a cold project. It's a cold uh, process, sorry. Um, even when we are using, uh, anyway, energy is a low energy producing. So it's a low energy. So, for example, um, we have some kind of thermal fermentation, like with the, um, this is a black garlic, you can see here. Black garlic needs to stay at 30 degrees, uh, sorry, at 60 degrees for uh, eight weeks with uh, technology that are actually not spending too much energy into that. Um, our farmers, uh, actually, we are working zero, zero kilometer. Uh, farmers and supplier are mostly on the range of 10 kilometers out of Basel, um, or any way from the region. Um, the material that we use or where we pack our products is actually glass. Uh, recycled paper, uh, carton is recycled, and everything is local produced, as well as packaging and so on. Um, there is the opportunity to reuse anyway. Um, the glasses can be bring it back into the shops where the people is buying our products. We keep them, we clean, we disinfect them, we sanify, and we uh, reuse to pack again the product. Compost of our products is actually uh, when we are in food production and uh, we are not producing producing so low at the moment, so it's actually quite high. Um, it's not more than five kilos per week. Um, this five kilo compost we give anyway back to our farmers. We are talking anyway about organic farmers. We bring back the, the, the compost to the farmer and the farmer they use to feed the soil. Um, what we are doing internal, our company as well, because there is a, a, a zero waste concept as well into our production. Um, we use actually the 100% of the products that we have. Um, in this way, we, we avoid to have uh, food waste, even the peel we use to create in products. Um, when we are producing one product, in most of the case, we have side products of that. For example, um, uh, when we are producing uh, the kimchi, this is the kimchi, it's actually a kind of a Korean sauerkraut. Out of that, you have a lot of liquids, so the brine, where the, pro where the product is fermenting into that. Uh, with that, we are doing a, um, barbecue sauce, for example, and so on. Uh, with meat, for example, with the meat, uh, the maybe second cut or part of the animal that are not uh, used anymore, or them, so they are not simple to cook, or they are not found space into the market, we are producing uh, in the same way of the old tradition of making fish sauce in Asia. Uh, we are making the Beef garu, this one, is actually the same process of applying the uh, fermentation on soya beans, but instead of working on the proteins of the beans, we are working on the proteins of the meat. So the, the result is the same. You have a really concentrated um, beef sauce in this way by using uh, bones and uh, meat. Uh, from animals that maybe they are not finding space on the market. What are success and uh, benefits in our company? Actually, uh, we are working with small and local producer. Uh, everything is uh, organic. 
we are supporting local economy um, and we are taking care of people's health because uh, fermented products are really healthy for our body. Um, benefits, uh, the, the producer can find a way to, to sell out, standard, uh, out of standard foods uh, for a fair price. So they are they not accumulate food in their um, stock and so on, so they don't have a problem with uh, stocking with food, so the lager, let's say. Um, we are producing uh, superfood, so fermented food is considered superfood, um, that give benefits um, for the economies and for the health. And anyway. consumers are feeling good because they are they are getting more uh, they are feeling good about the food. They 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 they, 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 so they in any way in this way they support local economy by buying the food that is coming from out of our company. Um, other benefits, um, lower loss on energetic resources, for example, uh, lower food waste, because in this way, we use mostly food that is not finding the way to go into the market. We increase health benefits, lower emission, sustainability, um, locality, and uh, seasonality of the food. The main challenges in uh, our business, uh, for sure, uh, was uh, <laughs> one year before uh, the start. So um, networking with suppliers was not really easy in, easy in the beginning. So they were, when we were starting about uh, talking about food waste, there was a kind of, um, so the, some farmers, they were not sure, so they were not really, happy to share this uh, uh, concept with us. Um, networking with um, um, local farmers can, uh, it's, not, it's not easy. Not everyone has a website, for example. When, when you want to get anyway this kind of food, so let's say second choice or insellable food, you, you have to uh, go and pick them up by yourself. There is no market for that, so there is no economy until now, so we create economy of this food as well. Um, logistics of the products is not easy. Um, and the biggest part, the biggest challenge was the, let's say that the, um, when you are trying to introduce a new products on the market, uh, so you have to make a lot of marketing, you have to teach to the people how to use it, uh, um, and so on. So the, this part was not easy, but we, we did some, uh, we get closer to the people with some workshops and so on, and as well uh, with social media. And um, yeah, let's say in the beginning it was not easy, but mm, such a daily business right now is, uh, is working uh, more than good. Thank you for, um, to everyone to be here and uh, it was really nice to meet all of you. Bye. Thank you very much, Matteo, for sharing with us your story. And uh, this were uh, eight with the presentations for tonight. And now we are moving to the panel discussion. And I would like to invite my colleague, um, Moni, um, I'm Moni uh, Altermat, Research Associate at Fachhochschule Nordwest Schweiz for the Zero Innovation Lab um, to moderate the discussion and to guide you through. So Moni, please. Thank you very much, Alina. Um, I was nicely introduced so that I don't have to introduce myself a lot. Um, as Alina said, I work for the Fachhochschule Nordwest Schweiz and um, doing the part of research and documentation here in the Zero Waste Innovation Lab, which is very exciting. And um, thank you for having me tonight to lead you through the panel discussion, which, with which we will start right away. Due to time constraints, we have a slight change of plans. We will not vote on the questions, but we have a very beautiful summary um, that I can use uh, to find interesting questions for you. Also, I have seen some of you have similar questions, so I will focus on them first. Please don't be offended if your questions will 
or question cannot be chosen due to time constraints and uh, we will also try to um, yeah keep the time frame of 15 minutes for the discussion so a very interesting question came up regarding tools of measurements um, of food waste so um, the question goes out mostly to Celinda and to Tamara. So what kind of tools, like digital tools, do you use to measure food waste? And what kind of um, measurement techniques do you use to determine the amount of waste created? I would first like to give the question to Celinda. Okay. Thanks for the question. So measuring food is quite simple. You have a bucket. Uh, you need, um, oh, not a word. Uh, where you measure your weight. What is it a called scale? again? A scale, exactly. And then uh, a pen uh, and the paper. <laughs> so it's, it's quite easy. You, you measure uh, your waste daily, which uh, makes things uh, easier. There are also uh, digital tools to measure, uh, to measure waste. We have been introduced to a digital tool uh, in the United uh, Against Food Waste uh, project. Um, I can share that with you uh, later on uh, in the chat or um, if, if uh, you guys can tell me where I can uh, send that to. But there are also uh, measurements, um, um, I mean, measuring uh, food is quite easy. It's not very difficult. So everybody can do it at home. And Back do you that. also use options to uh, prevent food waste? In what terms of, um, I think the person um, asking the question meant mostly um, like, uh, predictive tools that say you how much of one dish will be consumed. Oh, of course. Yes. In our case, since we have a buffet um, and uh, our, um, our offerings are included in our service, we actually have, you know, 99% of our guests actually have breakfast or uh, in, this, in the case of a seminar, usually the attendees, they tell us uh, um, what they want to order and uh, we actually advise them as well uh, as so they don't order too much because uh, also event organizers tend to order too much and um, uh, in, in terms of a buffet it's it's quite easy you you uh, you see how many people are going to attend the, the buffet is it going to be 110 people just 98 people and according to that um, you and we also look at nationality i have to say so there's some profiling going on as well, because some, uh, some uh, behaviors are different uh, for some nations. And in terms of uh, um, if they're uh, eating uh, very, if they're carb heavy, or for example, the, the Southerners, they really like to have their sweet stuff. They have a, a sweet tooth. And, um, and the Nordics, uh, they, they are more protein heavy. So um we we look at that as well this is how we do our measuring thank you very much tamara how do you do it so so basically what selena already said like we measure it the same with a balance to say okay this is five kg of food uh, which got wasted um of course we are a small coffer which opened in february so they're very small and we don't have these different nationalities coming here. Um, but we started with another um, approach, which, which is actually just order a bit and then see if people like this offer. And if, for example, we started with, as I mentioned, salad in a jar. If people like it, we can order daily and get some more for the next day. And also to, um, to stand behind and telling maybe a guest, okay, today we don't have this salad anymore, but we have that um, because it's already five to six and we're closing in five minutes and not to be afraid of telling people that something just uh, was out of, was sold out basically. So that's also one thing um, 
yeah, we try to do not to produce too much. So, yeah. That's a very interesting point in general. So I often hear the argument that the customer wants this, but the customer wants that. The customer expects this um, to, yeah, to counter argue why it's not possible to cut waste. How do you do, do react to that, um, Sanya? Hi, Nani. Can you please repeat the question? I yeah, sure. I, I lost you in one second. The question was um, mostly to what customers want. Um, mostly it said customer ex customers expect this or that and they want it the way it happens, which often leads to a high production of waste. So is it also your experience and how do you react to this? Do your customers, are your customers really that spoiled? So I think um, it's very hard, like we all, um, uh, Achieve, want to achieve zero waste, but I think it's far um, um, to be realistic. I mean, even at the beginning when you're starting um, in this kind of business, it's very hard. Um, and of course, the expectations from the companies uh, might be high saying, okay, if we, we want zero waste, then we want you to promise us that zero waste will be um, provided. But it's very hard to um, to manage that during the whole process of um, event planning, like starting first with the, with the farmers um, who are producing um, the food, um, then how are they packaging the food? How are they storing the food? Um, well, what amount of food is being wasted or rooted? Then the food is going to the caterers. Um, so what are the caterings doing with their kitchen leftovers and, and so on? So we try to um, follow all those steps um, so when we um, speak to uh, a farmer or speak to a caterer or producers so we have a list of um, kind of we prepared a, a questionnaire and, and a list which uh, we send it to them and we do kind of an interview in order to find out um, what are the difficulties they are facing and what are those particular um, um, loops uh, and gaps that we can fill in in order to secure that the food waste or uh, any other waste is not happening in the process of product, food production, food packaging, and so on. So that's the that's the challenging um, um, approach um, because of course that uh, means that they have to change their way of um, work in a way which is maybe and they are maybe not used to it. So, but, and they of course have to be open for, for such things. So that's why we say it's very important that we have this um, very open communication with the, with the whole supply chain, uh, that there is transparency. So then we can, we are able to guarantee to our clients, which are the corporates, which are the companies, um, that we uh, prevented the food waste and if there is a certain food waste then what are we doing with it so that's also an important question and then so we secure thank you this. yeah yes. that okay. remains a challenge definitely yeah um our question goes out back to um Celinda. i uh, we were asked uh, zero waste and local food means often that you have to invest more yeah have more effort how do you, ref or is that reflected in your prices? Especially organic food is also often seen as costlier. I mean, when we started, uh, one of the questions I saw was when we started the, uh, yeah. the organic process as well. So we started in 2014 actually. And, uh, but the whole switch really happened during 2015. So basically we went product by product, we looked at our inventory and uh, uh, you, you can't change the whole thing. I mean, we're not, it, we're a hotel uh, that has been there since 1929. So uh, of course it's not a new project and it's not a new opening. So it's a, it's, um, it was a, a business that has been going on for years and years. And so what we did uh, is look really product by product, 
uh, what can we change? Where can we find the suppliers that, uh, that um, are able to serve our purpose? So um, uh, having said that, uh, in the beginning, so five years ago, the, the prices were tremendous. So uh, our, our um, cost, uh, cost of food and uh, food sales is, was really up by at least 5%. And uh, so we did reflect that uh, in the beginning in our prices, in our hotel prices. And since our uh, hotel prices are dynamic, the, the consumers didn't really um, feel that there was a, a, um, an increase in pricing um, since that is done uh, dynamically. So for us, it we had our goal internally to increase our average rates and um, uh, for some uh, corporates, we did increase the rates as well, but that was not only because of the, the cost of, of uh, foods uh, that went up, it was also uh, uh, due to volume and other, other factors. But uh, all in all, the, the consumers didn't really feel the augmentation, the increase of, of the prices, and we really focused also in... in uh, value uh, adding uh, features so we always told our customers um, we are adding value to the quality we're adding value to your stay we are adding value to to the health uh, of the customer and uh, so that that um, so that increase in pricing wasn't really felt thank you very much and my last question is for matteo so um, the question was what your main consumers are or the main customers to be more precise. Is it really more private households or do you also sell to restaurants? Um, we are selling to everyone. So that we, our customers, as we have as well an online shop, for example, so our private customers, um, we are selling in two shops. So um we are selling to restaurants as well um yeah so fantastic great short answer i can ask another question <laughs> how did the restaurants react when you first approached them with that unique concept telling them that you use let's say a wasted food or even food that they would put in garbage to make even better food out of it so in this way, um, I have to tell you my background is actually, uh, I'm a kitchen chef. And so I was working a quite a long time into kitchens and so on. So I know how, we do, how is it working into restaurants and so on. Anyway, they try to reduce the, the food waste already in kitchens and so on. Um, there was not such a, a big problem against uh, let's say second choice vegetable that you anyway work with it um, actually we are not jumping into into beans so we, we are not jumping into the trash to pick up our food is completely fresh food just just the looks a bit different or funny let's say uh, carrots with the two legs or the cucumber that is all about itself and so on um, I would like to tell you, uh, so, Selinda, you, you were talking about the, um, so the question that you give to Selinda. Uh, actually, we experience as well this because we are making as well uh, caterings, uh, zero waste caterings and uh, uh, zero waste events and so on. Um, what is the best solution to reduce the waste in this way is to give less a choice to the to to the to the people. So the point is when, when you're actually going to offer um, top class menus, but you can just say, okay, uh, you can choose you can choose uh, the range of price that you want to spend, and if you want vegetarian meats or fish, for example, and then in this way you can set up a menu with really the zero waste approach in this way. So let's say a surprise menu in this way. The people could be maybe a bit more open about it, but from my experience, when we do that, um, 
people is reacting really good. Actually, they are really surprised in the end. Because to, us, to me, or to us, maybe it's not easy to, to know what is going to be second choice uh, vegetable or what I can find this morning to the butcher, for example. Uh, it's a surprise to me too. So this is the ability of the chef then to create a menu with what, with what, we, with what we get. And this is not always easy, but this is reducing the, the, the food waste. We, we closed, for example, caterings where I went on with just a, a glass of 250 grams of waste over a catering of uh, 60 people, for example, three course meal. And this is what we should do. Uh, give many, give less a chance to choice. <laughs> That's very impressive. Thank you for sharing this with us and congratulations to your achievements. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, with that, we have to end the discussion for the sake of um, the next point on the agenda. Uh, you will have probably there the opportunity to also discuss um, points in more depth. But uh, to introduce what is going to happen next, I'm giving back to Alina. Thank you very much, Moni, for moderating the discussion. Thank you to our speakers. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have an opportunity to talk directly to our uh, speakers, to our entrepreneurs. We will be break, uh, broke now into four groups. It will happen automatically. You will see like a small window uh, inviting you to join the group discussion. So just press it and join it uh, and you will have an opportunity to talk about the challenges that our uh, four companies are facing in terms of zero waste and offer your ideas for solutions. And at the end of the session, you will be automatically brought back to this space for the closing part. So uh, enjoy and have fun. Anna, Laura, can you please do it? So welcome back. Uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing your ideas with our social zero waste entrepreneurs, everybody. So this is a time to wrap up slowly. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to our wonderful speakers and to our entrepreneurs for the work you are doing and for being pioneers in this field. I think in gastronomy is quite a challenge it costs more and there are still not that many companies that are on this way. So congratulations on the achievement. Thank you very much to all our event team as, uh, and to all our organizers and other impact hubs supporting these events. Just for you all guys to know, that was our first uh, such a big online event on circular economy as of the beginning of the of the program at all and uh, therefore we are uh, very thankful for your patience we're a little bit out of time and maybe there were some small tiny hiccups so after this event tomorrow we'll have our follow-up email and there will be a link to the feedback um, uh, questionnaire so it will be nice if you can give your feedback and we can learn for the future events with Corona, it seems like we will have to organize a couple more for sure. In online format, um, we will as well share, uh, share there the um, link to the slides of our presenters of tonight. Um, and I wanted just to announce a couple of events that are upcoming in a similar topic. So the one which Sanya has already mentioned is the Anhaltige Speed Networking, which is already next week on the 30th of April. And you can already uh, register for this at the Impact Hub Basel Eventbrite or Meetup page. As well as for our incubator part of Circle Economy Transition Program, we are planning their demo day where our incubator is going to present um, their cases and their achievement here in the incubator on the 18th of May and uh, the registrations will be still to open. 
So uh, this is more or less it uh, as a very final step and a very uh, last thing that I would like us all to do together is to make a group picture with, so I invite everybody to switch on your camera and if you have a drink or a fruit or a snack just around you as far as this event on gastronomy and food, just put it into the camera, show it to us what is our topic for tonight and let's make a funny picture together. Anna, you can guide us. Give me a second. Um, I, mean, I have to do it twice, like in two groups, because we are now 39 participants. So I'll make one, three, two, one, everyone smile. Wait, a second group. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Keep the smile. One, three, two, one. There we go. I think I got everyone covered. Oh, thank you very much. This is a time where you can unmute yourself. We're going to clap together and you guys are free to enjoy your free evening. Ooh.